there. Thanks for joining me on 7 Edition. I'm Otto Othman. These are tonight's headlines. Federal government needs two-thirds majority to restore Sabah and Sarawak status. Low Tech Joe finally emerges on new website to proclaim innocence. Chaos in Hong Kong, millions to evacuate as the king of storms strikes China. We begin the bulletin this evening with businessman turned fugitive Lo Tek Jo or Jo Lo, who has finally resurfaced today to tell his side of the story and to declare his innocence. Now, in an effort to clear his name, Jo Lo launched a website where users can access legal documents and public statements regarding the accusations against him. Wanted in Malaysia and Singapore, and marked by U.S. prosecutors as the mastermind who orchestrated the theft of 4.5 billion U.S. dollars from one Malaysia development, Berhad 1MDB, the website provides information, court documents, and other materials related to the case. His goal, to provide a balanced view of the allegations and the truth behind these matters. In a welcome letter signed by himself, Lowe said many of the allegations thrown at him have originated from blog posts, improper leaks from within governmental agencies around the world, or unproven allegations filed in court. He also claimed that he was denied the opportunity to set the record straight. He goes on to proclaim his innocence, further stating that like any young person, he may have done things differently but that any mistakes he made but that any mistakes he made did not amount to the sweepingly broad and destructive allegations being made against him he has been charged in absentia in malaysia with money laundering and prime minister tun dr mahathir mohamad has called on low to return to help with the 1mdb probe before his sign off in the letter low asks that everyone courts prosecutors and the general public to keep an open mind until all the evidence comes to light in the meantime, the federal government needs to secure a two-thirds majority in parliament in order to make amendments to the federal constitution to restore the rights of Sabah and Sarawak as outlined in the Malaysia Agreement 1963, MA63. This, according to Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, would also require support from the opposition, which can only be seen when the time comes in parliament. But in the meantime, we will study what... Uh uh, but uh, things uh, can has to be repealed and uh, substituted with new uh, provision in the constitution. But there will also be some laws which we need to look into. When asked whether the, he thinks that the opposition will also be supportive, seeing that they have also been supportive of the restoration of rights to Sabah and Sarawak, to Dr. Mahathir says the opposition is known for saying things, but then doing something totally different. In order to restore the rights of Sabah and Sarawak, Tun Dr. Mahathir says that he also sees the need to increase the number of decision makers from the two states in Putrajaya. Uh, ad additionally, there is also a need to send officers from Peninsula Malaysia to Sabah and Sarawak. Sabah has the capability for rapid development due to its many advantages. According to Tun Dr. Mahathir, what hinders it from reaching its true potential is the rampant corruption practices by the previous administration. After a one-hour breakfast session with Sabah Chief Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdal and other state cabinet members, the Premier said Sabah has the potential to become the largest petrochemical producer as more deep water oil and gas production starts soon. The potential is good, but what happened before was that the cost went up because of corruption. You see, when you have to pay uh, to divert money for corruption, the cost goes up. And then that, I think, will, will stop because I intend to adopt the Chinese law where we shoot people. 
Apart from that, he said the implementation of the cabotage policy is also one of the contributing factors to the high cost of living in both Sabah and Sarawak. The government is ready to review the 5% oil royalty rate currently applicable for Sabah and Sarawak. However, the government would need to mull further over the decision on whether to increase the rate at 20%. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahdi Mohamad said that the government needed to ensure that such a move would not kill Petronas. If you take 40% of his operating costs, he may have that to the operating costs, Petronas will lose it. Petronas is a unique uh, company in the world because it's the only national oil company that goes into exploration, into development, into production, into petrochemical. And many people all over the world are asking Petronas to uh, do work in their country. So if you reduce Petronas to just collecting royalty, then we lose a lot of things. Speaking at a media conference in Kota Kinabalu this morning, Tun Dr. Mahadir, however, said that the government has every intention to increase oil royalty for both states as soon as possible. Before this, Economic Affairs Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali had said that a cabinet committee set up to study the payment method for oil royalty claims to oil producing states have been given six months to discuss, finalize and come up with their recommendation on how an increase to 20% oil royalty rate can be carried out. The government is also guaranteeing that the Pan Borneo Highway project will be continued, though it may take a longer time period to complete. Tun Dr. Mahadir says that the development of the project will very much depend on the nation's financial standing. Tun Dr. Mahadir says he understands the problems linked with the development in Sabah. He said, for instance, things were different when he went to Sabah in 1965. But now you have roads and we will do the North Borneo, the Borneo, uh, ben Borneo. Ben Borneo Highway. But that will be a little bit slow because we don't have the money. Tun Dr. Mahathir added that efforts to upgrade the educational infrastructure in Sabah is also one of the items under the state's restoration of rights that is being focused on. Consumers must understand their rights and roles to ensure that they are not cheated and that they have the ability to ensure that market prices of goods and services are not a subject to trader profiteering. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Hwan Ismail is therefore urging consumers nationwide to assist the government in the identifying errant traders who profiteer by charging unreasonably for prices of goods and services. Untuk mempergiat usaha memuatkuasakan lagi bagi mengekang sebarang kegiatan mengawat keuntungan yang tidak munasabah oleh segelintir golongan peniaga yang tidak bertanggungjawab. Tindakan yang tegas perlulah diambil kepada sebarang salah laku ini agar menjadi teladan kepada semua pihak. Datuk Seri Dr. Wan Aziza was speaking at a consumer empowerment program in Keningau, Sabah this morning. She also said that consumers should become friends of the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry apart from being the ministry's eyes and ears on the ground. This can be done by channeling information and the appropriate proof of pictures to the ministry's hotline number at 019-279-4317. All complaints will be followed up on within 24 hours. Former AMNO chief, Youth Chief Khairi Jamaluddin wants AMNO or Barsa Nasional to contest in the Port Dixon by-election against Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. In his Twitter posting today, Khairi alluded that Datuk Sri Anwar should not be given a free pass to win the by-election. In a sardonic tone, Khairi said, coronations are for kings and Anwar isn't one. Therefore, he said AMNO and BN must contest. The Port Dixon parliamentary seat was vacant by, vacated by its incumbent, Dato Daniel Balagopal Abdullah, through a resignation to, pro, to pave way for a by-election to take place. This is to enable PKR President-elect Dato Sri Anwar to contest and ultimately return to the country's political arena before becoming Malaysia's eighth prime minister.
In other news, the chairman of Malay Muslim Autism Association of Malaysia, Autism Malaysia, Zabri Tembol, is calling for the standard operating procedure SOP in handling people with special needs to be improved, citing the recent arrest of a young man with autism who touched the chest of a girl last Tuesday clearly indicates the poor understanding by society at large, including the authorities on the special needs community. Zamri said this clearly calls for the need to enhance society's understanding on people with special needs. Mungkin juga boleh membina SOP bagi mengendalikan kes yang melibatkan autism khususnya dan okey lain amnya. Bagi orang awam saya fikir harus lebih empati dan bertimbang rasa sebelum mengambil tindakan undang-undang terhadap individu autism. Orang awam juga saya rasa harus sedar bahawa individu OKU ada yang kita tidak dapat lihat dari segi fizikal. Zabri also suggests that the authorities to be educated by about autism and the skills needed to interact with the special needs community should the need for such cases arise. He also maintains the importance of parents to not give up on their autistic child, to preserve and to educate the child on the limits of touch and privacy, especially when it especially in public places, although this may sometimes prove difficult. On Wednesday, the Petaling Jaya Magistrates Court rejected a four-day remand order by the police on a 22-year-old autistic man to assist with investigation for allegedly outraging the modesty of a girl outside a restaurant in Subang Jaya, Sanlango. The Selang Magistrate Court has allowed a three-day extension period beginning tomorrow for the remand order on two men suspected to be involved in the killing of a cat at a self-service laundriette. The court's assistant registrar, Hasliza Raza, issued the remand order until this Thursday to assist police investigation on the duo. Both suspects who arrived at the court at 8.30 a.m. had been remanded for four days last Friday under Section 428 of the Penal Code for mischief by killing or maiming animals. The two men in their 30s and 40s were arrested by Gomba Criminal Investigation Department following police intelligence gathering and tip-offs by the public. However, police are still hunting for a third man believed to also be involved. Police have been on the lookout for three after killing a pregnant stray cat by putting it in a clothes dryer in Taman Gomba Ria at about 12.30 a.m. last Tuesday. The cat was found dead by a customer the following day at about 10.30 a.m. before an animal rights group lodged a police report on the incident. Their cruel act was caught on the laundrette's CCTV camera and has since gone viral on social media, sparking a nationwide outrage, with many calling for the suspects to be severely punished for their actions. The second suspect involved in an armed group robbery which took place last week has been remanded for six days to assist an investigation into the case. The 20-year-old suspect was nabbed by the roadside in Juru at 7 a.m. yesterday. The remand order was issued by the Sungai Petani Sessions Court Assistant Registrar Balkis Abdul Halim. Investigation was carried out under Section 395 that was read together with Section 397 of the Penal Code for Group Armed Robbery. Last Friday, a house, last Friday, a husband and wife duo were arrested and remanded after they were believed to have been involved in a robbery at a laundriette and a convenience store at Bandar Putri Jaya and Taman Ria. Both crimes caught the attention of netizens after CCTV recordings of both incidents went viral on social media. With the arrest of all the suspects, the case on the three premises, premises is now closed. Here's something to take note for Ardent Kutu players. It looks like you shouldn't play that anymore unless you want to go to jail, as Kutu or Tontin is actually a serious offense. You can get jailed for no more than 10 years and or fined no more than 500,000 ringgit if found guilty of organizing Tontin groups or running a business that manages Tontin groups. According to the Cybercrime Alert Royal Malaysian Police Facebook page, the Commercial Crime Investigation Department, JSJK, reported several cases of missing Tontine organizers who ran away with the investors' money. 
On June 3rd, it was reported that nine women in Sagama, Joho, lost between 200 to 4,500 ringgit after being cheated by a Kutu organizer. So folks, it's important for people to know that some of these groups are illegal and dangerous. Two men died after the trailer they were in skidded and plunged into a ravine at Kampong Pipi, Jalan Guri, Klian Intan in Guri, Pera. In the 9 a.m. accident, both victims were confirmed dead at the scene. According to police, an investigation found that the trailer carrying ice holes, rice holes had, also, had lost control while descending a sloped road before it skidded and plunged into the ravine, throwing both victims out of the vehicle and onto the road. The identities of the victims have yet been ascertained, but they are believed to be related. Their remains were sent to the Guri Hospital for post-mortem. At least 20 film crew members filming local movie Amazing Spring were rushed to hospital this morning due to smoke inhalation. There was reportedly a blaze at the set of the movie in a forest near a shopping complex in Banda Bukit Pucho. Disaster management officers from the Putrajaya Civil Defense Department were deployed to the scene and provided first aid to the victims before sending them to Serdang Hospital for treatment. One of the victims was reported to be in critical condition and has been admitted to the red zone at the hospital. The cause of the fire is still unknown. However, initial information found that they were filming a fire scene before the blaze started. Now, when we return, reporter blasted for dramatic reporting. The details and more when we come back. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at our daily segment, Clickbait, for what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Now, we've heard so many viral stories about incidents involving illegally parked cars getting clamped or drivers attacking officers for clamping their cars, among others. But a recent incident, one that could probably happen to just anyone out there, had netizens taking the driver's side instead of the typical bash the driver for going against the law response. In a post that was shared to a local Facebook group, a woman said that she was fined by Kuala Lumpur City Hall, DBKL, at a parking lot near the store in Sri Pataling. Photos that were uploaded showed her red My V parked nicely in a half-white, half-yellow box. But upon returning to her car, to her surprise, she found a ticket that summoned her for parking outside of the parking space and was fined 100 ringgit. Responding to a commenter, the netizen said that prior to paying the fine, she had asked the DBKL officers when they had changed the color of legal parking spots to yellow. One officer allegedly replied by saying that they didn't know about it, but emphasized that she made a mistake by parking in the white spaces. Feeling full, the woman said this kind of incident serves as a trap, as the colors weren't clear enough. While other netizens responded by saying that DBKL has no right to issue the summon for vehicles parked in white spaces as they are privately owned. Poor woman. Now, for our viewers out there, looks like you need to pay extra close attention to the next time you park your car in a public area. Right, moving on, the internet is having a field day with a video of a Weather Channel reporter in the U.S. who last week happened to be reporting on the powerful hurricane Florence that battered the country. Now, it seems like social media users think that his struggling attempt to stay upright against the wind was, well, not right. Mike Seidel used dramatic movements to seemingly keep his balance during a live shot on Friday. The act seemed believable at first, and many would think that it was a brave and committed act. But then, two men entered the frame behind him and seemed to have no trouble walking around sending netizens to post up sarcastic comments on the man who allegedly overstated the impact of the storm. One Twitter user, whose post has been retweeted more than 230,000 times, captioned the video as it is. Others commented along the same line, including one that said the reporter deserves an Oscar for his act. Even memes came out. 
Later, the Weather Channel released a statement after the video went viral claiming that exhaustion and difference in surface contributed to the distinction. According to a Washington Post report, Seidel was trying to maintain his footing on wet grass, whereas the other two people were walking on concrete. Now updated as of 7 p.m. Here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Now here's something for the fitness fans out there. Zumba, a fitness craze that has gained worldwide attention since it was introduced in the 1990s, has also become popular among Malaysian youths to get fit. Coupled with hip and trendy music, the current generation sees Zumba as a pleasant alternative to late night clubbing due to its health benefits. One is Islam has more. <laughs> Now, this crazy phenomenon is taking over Malaysia bit by bit. To find out more, let's head over to Excellent the Studio and let's have some fun. Inspired by Latin dancing, Zumba is a type of fitness exercise involving dance and acrobatic movements performed to energetic music. Apart from burning calories, participants feel a sense of euphoria through the music, which often helps reduce tension and stress among dancers. This high-intensity workout is seen amongst the youth as a great way to socialize while maintaining a fitness routine. Uh, when doing Zumba, I can, I, can be, I can be fit and at the same time I can have fun and with my friends and know many, many people. Huh? I've been doing Zumba like almost one year and a half. So what Zumba makes me feel is I feel confident. So I can prove to everyone that Zumba is not meant for women only. Men also can do it, you know? Since 2013, Excellento Studio has been promoting a healthier lifestyle through Zumba. Founder Nora Liza Kamaruzaman believes it is easier to connect with the younger generation through Zumba due to its trend-setting nature. Kira-kira exercise ni dia kena macam uh, fashion baju juga dia kena trend sebab muda-muda sekarang ni untuk menarik minat ha, pemuda muda-muda ni semua untuk bagi kan aktiviti daripada dia orang buat uh, uh, sesuatu benda yang tak elok uh, seperti malam uh, apa tu hang out semua gitu okey kita sediakan zumba okay. Excellent Studio will be organizing one of the largest Zumba gatherings in Malaysia on September 22nd to help share and spread the love of fitness and healthy lifestyle. Over 500 Zumba fanatics will gather at Dewan Seri Iskandar in Taman City Awangsa, Kuala Lumpur to participate in the Zumbathon. One is Islam reporting for 7th edition. Coming up on 7th edition, dozens of bodies recovered in aftermath of Typhoon Mangkut. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. On to the foreign front. Hong Kong and China were hit by heavy wind and rain on Sunday, causing extensive damage as Super Typhoon Mangkut hurtled by the city. There were no immediate reports of fatalities in Hong Kong. However, the Chinese government said on Monday at least four have been killed and 200 others injured in Guangdong, China. Various videos circulated on social media show incidents of people battling through the fast typhoon winds and another that chose to not even try. Fortunate news for airline passengers. The two runways at Hong Kong International Airport will remain open overnight on Monday and Tuesday to handle over 2,000 rescheduled flights, when previously a total of 889 flights were cancelled on Sunday. Moreover, Hong Kong's markets opened as usual on Monday morning, as the financial hub began clearing up after what was locally dubbed as the King of Storms being one of the strongest typhoons sweeping the shore in recent years. 
over in China. The monster typhoon has then moved into Guangxi Chuan Autonomous Region by Sunday midnight. However, cities in the south have started repair and cleanup as Mangkut weakens on Monday. Schools in Guangxi's capital, Nanning City, were closed, and due to early preparations, transportation was not severely affected. In Hainan, cross-island high-speed railway services were suspended for hours and resumed early Monday morning. Air traffic is gradually resuming, with 310 flights scheduled for Monday at the provincial capital's airport, but the Cheongju Strait remained closed. Though the worst appears to have passed for Guangdong, local meteorological authorities warned residents to remain alert for floods and landslides in Guangxi. Hopes of finding survivors in the rubble of a huge landslide in the Philippines faded as rescuers in the remote mountainous region on Monday recovered the bodies of miners, with dozens others still missing two days after the killer typhoon Mongkut struck. Various reports put the death toll between 34 to 43 so far in the village of Uchab in Itogon town. Many of the missing or dead, mostly gold miners, were seeking refuge in an abandoned bunkhouse turned chapel, which had all been crushed by the moving earth. It was reported that the abandoned bunkhouse was near the site of the mine, which was operating illegally. Ucha village was hit by one of 50 landslides triggered by heavy rains brought by Typhoon Mangkut, which ravaged Philippines early on Saturday and killed at least 64 people, with the death toll expected to rise. After 10 years of launching her fashion label, Victoria Beckham showcased her first collection at London Fashion Week. The gorgeous runway will keep you company as we wrap up 7 edition tonight. I'm Otto Othman. Thanks for watching and have a lovely night.